Hello, hello. Good afternoon, everyone. Hey, Vern, love you too. Hey, Nappy Spirit. Hey, two Navy kids. God's greatest gift. Hello, hello. Hey, Jimmy, how you doing, bro? <laughs> hey, Kita. In this North Carolina, awesome. Hey, Lucy. Hello, hello. Hello, bless all of y'all. Y'all come on in. I'm, uh, I really am gonna be short. <laughs> I know I say that every time, but I really am because I've got to get in this gym because I've got to get back dedicated. And I have been slacking with this gym thing, so um, today is a new day for me. Uh, so y'all come on in, share. Uh, finally a good time for me. <laughs> share with your uh, followers, invite them, share on your networks. Really quick, I just want to share something on my heart. Let me get the offering play. <laughs> Jimmy, please stop. I'm going to be so calm and short. Y'all are going to be surprised. Okay, so I want to talk to y'all uh, real quick and, and briefly about something that that was that's been on my heart the past couple 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 excuse me of days and even today actually is that God wants to remind some of you all. Uh, how he thinks and how he flows and how he chooses to invade our lives. And I want you to remember that God desires that we follow him out of relationship and not out of formula. We follow God out of relationship and not out of formula. And if you're not careful, if you um, listen to preachers and you listen to other people give their testimonies and share their life stories, the point of the sermon and the messages and the testimonies, uh, uh, one of the points of it is to inspire faith. But your faith must originate with the author. The Bible says that Jesus is the author and the finisher of of our faith. And so if Jesus, who is the word made flesh, so it is the word of God that authors my faith. That means anything that I believe God for, anything that I go after God for, it must be authored by the word. If what I say I'm believing for, if what I am walking in faith for, if the word did not author it, then it's not real faith. Because in order for it to be faith, the word of God, Jesus, the word made flesh must author my faith. So we've got to start realizing that if Jesus, the word is going to author faith, then it's going to take Jesus in order to finish it, in order to perfect it. So we have to realize that relationship, that's right, is the key to how we progress in the things of God. It's going to be how, how you know what to do, how you know which direction to take, what relationships to invest in. It is going to be based on relationship, not on a formula. You know, that is a lot. Lot of that is a reason why a lot of people have a hard time with tithing is because you make tithing about a formula rather than relationship when you tithe because it, uh, one plus one equals two in your head and so you think tithing is a formula for a, a get rich quick scheme then you're going to tithe and yet not see harvest and not see benefit in your life because you base tithing on a formula rather than rather than a relationship it is out of relationship it is out of honor that I give God 10% and more because I give him what he requires, what he desires of me, what not what I've formulated in my head. And so God is really trying to get us to a place of realizing that he desires relationship. He desires us to make decisions and to take uh, directions in our lives and to go after things in our lives based on what he is instructing us to do, based on what he is instructing us to go, not based on this formula that you have gotten down pat. Because I want to tell you something, just because God did something one way does not mean that is how he's going to do it in this season. As a matter of fact, we're going to find God doing a lot of things in this season that are going to be out of the box, out of the norm. It's not going to be based on a track record that you've had. He is going to do some new and unusual and glorious things, but it's, but you're only going to ride this wave of God and ride on this wave of glory if you have relationship with him, because it's going to be based on what God is saying to you, not based on, I haven't prayed in months, and yet I'm walking in the blessings of God. That will not be your testimony. 
testimony in this season. Because if you're not talking to God, you won't know where he is. You won't know where he's going. You won't know what he's doing. And you're going to find yourself lost, confused, irritated, and frustrated because you're trying to follow God based on a formula rather than the relationship that you are building with him. Now, interesting thing about that word formula, uh, two definitions of that word that really stuck out to me as I was looking at, at it over the past couple of days is number one, a formula, it is a mathematical relationship. Listen to me. It is a mathematical relationship. It is when you try to box God into the logic of, of numbers it, it is a formula. What do I mean by that? Is that when you're in your mind, when you try to calculate, if I do this, then God will do that. If I give God 10%, then God will do this. If I give God that, if I do this, if I walk this way, then God will do that. If you try to bind God to a formula, you are going to find yourself serving a, a God you have created in your mind. And the created God in your mind will have you live in a Christian life of hit and miss. Have you ever lived, lived walk with who you thought to be God and, and one minute you're walking in the blessings of God and the next minute you're not walking in blessings. One minute you're walking in favor and the next minute you don't know what happened to that favor. See, my God is not a hit and miss God. And that has been a prayer of my heart for years. A prayer of my heart for years was God, never let me develop a relationship with a God that I created in my own mind. Never let me start praying to a God that I have created from my own imagination because I want to know the real God. I don't care what he has to say to me. I don't care if he needs to rebuke me. I don't care if he needs to whoop me. I don't care what he wants to do, what he wants to say. Just never let me become deceived by my own interpretations of who God is. And that is what happens when you have a formula relationship with God. You don't know God for real. You don't really know him because you have calculated God. And whenever you think you can calculate God, then you are probably missing him. And you are probably living a lifestyle of hit and miss. You're probably living a lifestyle where sometimes you get a lifestyle of hit or miss with the Lord. So you've got to learn that it's not about formula. It is about relationship. So stop trying to calculate God in your life and realize that it's going to be based on instructions. Number two about formula. It is a formula is when you follow God with un, with no intelligence. A formula is something is a rule or a law you follow and, and it's not based on any type of intelligence at all. You know, away with this, this uh, doctrine or teaching that tells us that God doesn't want to use our minds. God is all about intelligence. As a matter of fact, another word for prophetic or prophecy is divine intelligence. Another word for the wisdom of God is divine intelligence. It is impossible for you to develop a real and serious relationship with God without his intelligence. And so if you call yourself praying and you call yourself living for God, and yet it has required no divine intelligence in your life, then you are not following him. You are tied to a formula. And so you've got to untie yourself. God wants you to untie yourself and get your head in the game. Get your mind in the game. Get your mind in the plan that God has for your life. God has a strategic plan for you. He has a purpose. He has a pre-calculated plan for your life and he has a calendar for your life as well. And you will miss the calendar of God. You will miss the timing of God if you stay stuck to a formula that God used in your life years ago. We are not in the 90s anymore. We are not in the first decade of the millennium anymore. We've got to know what God is saying right now. You need to know what is God leading you and directing you and, and, and instructing your life to be about in this season because we are in a new season indeed. It is a new time indeed. And with every new season comes a new set of instructions. And so I want you to be successful in this season. I want you to be able to achieve all that God has laid out before you in this season. But you're only going to be able to achieve it if you decide that I've got to unstick myself from following the formulas of even my own past relationship with God because we have to be careful with that. 
that we don't look at our past relationships with God and see how God dealt with us in the past and what God said to us in the past and how God dealt with us dealing with relationships in the past. We've got to make sure that we are current with our revelation. Yes, that's what God told you last week, but what is God saying today? What is God directing today? What is God leading you to do today? It is the today of God that we have got to lock ourselves into to put our head in the game because I'm telling you that just like God's plans, just like God has seasons, so does the enemy. The enemy operates in seasons and times. How do I know that? Because the Bible says when the enemy came to Jesus and tempted him in the wilderness, the Bible says that once Jesus passed the test, Satan didn't go and run and hide and never to return. The Bible says he left for a season until a more opportune time for him to run up on Jesus. And he showed up again because the Bible says Jesus said that the prince of this world cometh, but he finds none of him in me. What does he need to find? He needs to find to see if you are hooked up to a formula or if you know God for real, if you are a son for real, because sons have relationship. And so the enemy is not going to leave you alone. He's coming in seasons. He's coming in cycles. And in order for you to understand the tactics and the schemes and the wiles of the enemy, you must understand relationship. You must know what God is saying. Because if you have intelligence about what God is saying, then you will not be intimidated by what the enemy is doing. I'm going to say that to you again, and then I've got to get in this gym. I'm saying if you have intelligence about what what God is saying, then you will no longer be intimidated by what the devil is doing. And the reason why we live in intimidation and fear and insecurity is because we are jacked up on formulas in our relationship with God. We don't talk to him like we should. We don't spend time with him like we should. We don't fellowship like we should. We are just depending on the last thing God said. But how many of you know God is saying something today? God is releasing something today. God is giving instructions today. And I'm telling you that in this season, God's instructions are going to be so precise and so clear because the instructions he are he is releasing in this season, it is going to affect the rest of your life. God is releasing life-changing instructions. And if you're going to be stuck on a formula and stuck on what you used to do and how you used to relate to God, you're going to miss this life-changing transition that God is trying to usher your life into. It's time for you to get your head in the game. Stop playing these games uh, with people. Stop playing these games with your relationship with God. Stop playing these games with your destiny and get your head in the game. Get divine intelligence about what God is saying. Get divine intelligence about where God is leading and directing your life. Get his mind on it because when you get his mind on it, then you will move with grace, favor, and, and with a momentum that will just be out of this world because it came from the realm of eternity. So I release the voice of the Lord in your life. The Bible says, how do you know when you've heard the voice of God? Because the Bible says that the voice of the Lord is powerful. It is powerful. It releases supernatural ability to you. How do you know when you've received divine intelligence? It's because you didn't just get a word. You just didn't get revelation, but you got power. You got ability to achieve what God said. Get your head in the game. Get your head in the game so that you can go after all God has for you. Man, okay, this hair looks a mess. It really does. Apostle was right. I got to go get a haircut tomorrow. But um, <laughs> y'all get your head in the game. Go after what God has for you. And don't allow the enemy to intimidate you. Hey, Madam C, God bless you. Don't allow the enemy to intimidate you in this season. Don't allow them because if you start sinking into intimidation, it it just means you need to break away and get divine intelligence about your life. So get intelligence about your life. Get your head in the game and go after what God has for you. All right. God bless y'all. Y'all enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, Spend time with God. Get his mind on your life and go after what he has for you. Thank y'all. Talk to you later.